Well, it's mid-morning around 10 o'clock next day. Let's go over and see how things worked out over the night if we got any leaks. So what this is going to tell me is if I see any drips on that uh, sediment bowl assembly, then it'll mean that uh, either my connection where it screws into the bottom of the tank is leaking or the valve assembly is leaking. And I am pleased to see that there is no sign of leakage whatsoever. Okay, so now I can attach my fuel line to the sediment bowl and uh, reattach it here to the uh, pump input. And then we'll, uh, we'll open up the uh, valve there and recheck the leaks. I brought my sealant out, but it's not gonna work on this fitting, because this fitting is a, uh, it's a compression fitting. You know, what's supposed to happen as you tighten this, this flared end is supposed to go in and seat, and that's what makes the seal. So it's not actually the threads that do the sealing in this particular application here. Same thing on the other end. This is a, the other end of this is a flared fitting going into this fitting. So I just tighten that up. Now that I get that good and tight, I'm gonna tighten the whole thing into the, into the, uh, sediment bowl assembly. Ah, take two. <laughs> I didn't like the way that was threading in there. It didn't seem like I could get it to thread correctly. And in the fear of uh, cross-threading it and damaging the soft threads in that cast metal head, I uh, decided instead to take it back out and take this fitting off of the hose here. Part of the problem is as I'm turning the hose because it's got a bend in it, it's kind of hard to keep it straight. So I'm going to take this fitting out, thread this fitting in, make sure that's threading properly first, and then I'll thread this uh, hose fitting onto here. Uh, that way if I mess this up, I'll only damage this little piece right here, which is, you know, not as bad as ruining the uh, sediment bowl head. So let's see, threads on here look like they're fine. So I'm going to uh, put this in now. Yeah, that was definitely the way to go because uh, even with that hose off, it still took me a couple of tries to get it to thread properly and then it finally did thread properly. And now, since I have that off, I can actually use a half inch socket on there uh, because it's kind of hard to get in there with the wrench. Okay, that flare nut is uh, 5 eighths inch and the trick now is tightening that and I can barely get my hand in there, never mind a wrench. But I think I got a trick for that every now and then. You buy something for that one job and you have it for a long time before you need it again and then all of a sudden the uh, time arises for its use. Uh, these are typically called crow's feet and basically what this is going to do is you can put a 3 8 inch extension in there and uh, turn it. So well, that's 9 16 I need 5 8 here we go. So let's see how that's going to work. That goes on there like that, and we can stick an extension in there, and we can actually uh, turn it. All right, now, unlike the other end, this is a regular tapered pipe thread fitting. So this one, we can use some sealant on the threads. All right, so here's a good look at what I mean by installing the uh, sealant on, off of the first couple of threads so that uh, as I thread that in, there's no chance of any sealant ending up inside there where it can come off in little pieces and, and uh, really mess up your day. All right, so I loosened this hose clamp so that I could rotate that fitting uh, and screw it in without twisting the hose. So now I'm gonna retighten that hose clamp. And now I can turn on the fuel and check for leaks. All right, so I'm gonna reach underneath there and see if I can't, there we go. Can't see anything, but I can feel the uh, shutoff valve. And so what I want to do is I want to unscrew that valve to the full open position, being mindful not to uh, go too fast past where it stops. Because if I force it, I'm just going to end up loosening my packing nut, although I did tighten it pretty darn tight, but still. 
So again, I need it fully open so that it seats in that outer position. That's gonna help it maintain a leak-free situation underneath there. All right, so let's see. All right, the valve is open. Oh no, look, it's barely even filling at all. It's just dripping. Well, that's to be expected. Why? Because if everything's leak tight, what I've got is I've got air trapped in this line right now, and that's uh, creating enough pressure to keep the, uh, the fuel from coming in. So if I open up the line somewhere and bleed it, that should uh, start flowing. So let's see, I've got the bleeder screw on the other side. That's an easy spot. I wish I could do it right here. I should have left this loose, I guess, but hey, you know, I'm not a genius. Can't think of everything. Oh, nice little bit of frost over here on the pump. Okay, let's see. Where are we? Yeah. I'm gonna open this up. See if that does anything for us. If it doesn't, well, then I'll have to put a little bit of voltage to that pump and see if we can't use the pump to uh, pull the fuel in and force the air out. Yeah, that ain't doing much for us. Okay, let's uh, give a little bit of voltage to the pump. Oh man, what a bummer. I must have left that key on. My battery's completely dead. How do you like them apples? Oh well. It is filling on its own. Slowly. And I'm too far from the house to run an extension cord, so that means I gotta take this battery and charge it. It also might be frozen. It's not a good idea to try and charge a dead battery that's frozen. So, I'm gonna take it in the house. See now, if I had finished up my wiring job and had my idiot light in the dashboard, it would be on uh, when I left the key on and it would be like, uh, you know, shining out to say, hey idiot, you left the key on, you're gonna kill your battery. Hmm. Oh, well, my uh, idiot light's working. I just temporarily wired it up, so... I know I'm getting 12 volts here. I wonder if something happened to that pump. Well, I'm just trying to start it. Hopefully it'll work the air out on its own. should be enough fuel left in this section to get it to start, and then it should run real rough when it gets to that air pocket. What if I keep it going? It'll purge itself, theoretically. <laughs> There wasn't that much air in there after all. It's running good. Got to still do a little jump there to get my alternator cooking. Ooh, let's see how over full that crankcase is, shall we? Camera down to wipe the thing. Eh, maybe not. Look at that. All right. La -da -da. Drum roll, please. Yeah, it's in the area that says high. It's about three-eighths of an inch above the eye mark. Probably diesel fuel. 
by the looks of it. Not foamy enough to be coolant or water. Alrighty. So we know we gotta address some leaks on the injector pump. And we may have a leak on the drive shaft with the injector pump that might be dumping raw diesel into the crankcase.